Hello, in this video I'll be going through Materialize and I'll be going into as much detail as I can. I'm also going to talk about what you can and can't do and the problems that you might come up against in these type of programs. This will be a more detailed look at Materialize. If you want to look at a quick start guide, then look at the card in the corner now. I'd strongly recommend looking at that video before watching this one just to get used to the basic functions. Then look at the card in the corner or the link in the description. These are all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go from beginner right through to advanced levels and all the courses are free. And you can always go along to the Discord server if you have any questions or you want to chat with like-minded people or join in the competitions there. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, let's look at some textures. So here I am on textures.com and I'm in the floors section. So floors might be something that you want to create. So let's have a quick look at the types of materials that might work and those that might not. So firstly, think about masks. The whole program works on the principles of masking with white being the full effect and black being no effect. So this material looks a good material. In this case, let's say we wanted to create a bump out of this. It would be fairly straightforward for the grout or mortar to be pushed backwards and the bricks to be pushed out. So we can easily isolate the color of the bricks and the color of the mortar and this will work for our maps. If we look at this checkerboard pattern here, this is where we're likely to see more problems. And that's because of the differences between the two bricks. So if we were to take this into the displacement or the height map, it would be very difficult for us to flatten out these two bricks, even though they are actually at the same height. But the program would want to push this one backwards and this one forwards. So when you're dealing with textures, you're going to want to use colors that have the same tone. So this one, for example, would work, this one, but this one certainly wouldn't because of the differences in tone between the two bricks. Let's quickly go into this one and see what options there are. Materialize works better with square images. So let's click on this one. Textures.com have lots of seamless textures, which should help us. So this would be a nice texture to use. And I would say that's the minimum resolution that you want to go for when choosing a texture. So 1024 roughly by 1024. You might want to adapt this slightly to make it purely square. So when you're choosing your material, think about the differences in tone that will affect all the maps and also try and get a high resolution square texture. So here, for example, I've downloaded a couple of textures. This test metal I've adapted so that it's square and taken it from this one. So in your program, set out a size of 1024 by 1024 and then make sure your texture fits into that. So let's load up Materialize and we have to start on the diffuse map. That's where all the images are taken from. So let's open a diffuse. So press on the O for open and find that metal texture. And there it is. Let's go to edit in the diffuse section and you can see the reveal slider here with my original texture and what it's editing it to. And you can change where that reveal slider looks. So at the moment it's a very washed out gray and I quite like this sort of bluey texture. So I want to bring that back. So there's a keep original color here and I can pull that up and it's bringing back some of that blue. Now there's things to watch out for here. If we want to tile this texture, we have to watch out for patches of darkness and lightness. And luckily this material doesn't have any. Now I'm going to try and go through the sliders, but I won't be detailing exactly what everyone does because I find it quite confusing to understand, but I do know what I'm aiming for and I can advise you in that. So let's take the average color blur size. If I push this across slightly, you can see in this bottom corner here, it actually gets darker. So when I push it up and push it across, and that's the sort of shading and shadows you don't want because this is darker than this bit. So if we were to tile this, we'd see this shadow and see this light bit repeated. So it wouldn't be so good. What we're trying to do is go for a fairly flat image. So when you're sliding these sliders and playing around a bit, try and get as flat an image as possible. You're going to get variations in these lines, for example, that's unavoidable. And in fact, you want to keep those, but you do want to keep it with the same tone going across the whole image. So no patches that are too dark and patches that are too bright. So trying to keep it in the middle. So you can see as I push that slider back, it brings this up to the level of everything else, and that's really useful. So you can play with these sliders and see what they do. It's okay to have a bit of sharpness in our image if I zoom in a bit. So you can see some of these blur settings will blur your image slightly. And it's sometimes a good idea to go back to this image once you've finished. There's a shadow mask power, which should affect the shadows. And you can actually remove shadows. Can you see that shadow up there being removed? So if I pull that up, 
and it's a good idea at this stage to flatten that out slightly. There's a hot spot removal which is removing those really bright bits as you can see there and that should help us slightly as well and dark spot removal and you can see it affecting the dark spots let's zoom in and see what it's doing though because if we go too far let's say the hot spot removal it starts pulling it towards the black and we don't want that we want it probably somewhere around there so final contrast gives us our color back and the final bias we have to be a bit careful of down the bottom here we don't want to create patches again so maybe somewhere around here and you can see the saturation is the color and we're trying to keep the original color so we're pushing all those up to one so I've got this to a stage which I'm fairly happy with so I can set diffuse once you've got that in you can start creating other maps now interestingly we can't create a normal map yet we have to create a height map but in this particular material I don't really want a height map a normal map will be fine because it's a fairly flat material with just a few little bumps around the place. That's where a normal map is preferable to a height map. But we're going to have to create our height map in order to create the normal map. So although this material doesn't need a height map, I will talk about them here just to explain what's going on. So once again, the white bits push out, the dark bits push in, and the mid-gray will stay the same place. Now if we look at the default, it's fairly blurry and a blurry image is actually better than a crisp image. If I go to details and then set as height map, show full material, you'll see the problems you get with sort of spiky lumpy bits. That might be all right if you're trying to do waves or something like that, but I would say it's fairly rare. Instead, let's go back to create. A default one is better, and in fact a displace gives it even more smoothness. There is a lot you can change in here, and it might be that you want to reverse the white and black, then you can pull the contrast into the negative and it will reverse them. So let's say you've got some white mortar in bricks, you can pull the final contrast down and that will help you. What you can also do is color sample. So use color sample just here, and you can pick a color, let's say this greeny blue here, and then you can start pulling those around and affecting those. So the hue is the actual color itself and its color placement in the color wheel. Saturation is the amount of color. Luminance is the light. And then there's low and high frequencies. Now this will all get very confusing. Don't panic too much about this. You can kind of just play around and see which one benefits you and which one doesn't. And always be thinking about the end result. Which bits do you want to stick out? The white. And which bits do you want to push backwards with the blacks? and then just play with the dials a touch and see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to push the contrast back and then just set the height map. At this point you can see I can create a normal map, but without that displacement map, I can't. So in a moment I'll clear the height map once my normal map's created. So I'll press on create here, and here's my normal map. Now this is quite hard to tell what's going on, but you should be able to see roughly what's happening. So there's sort of like a smooth gradient here where the colors blend together and ideally we don't really want a smooth gradient. So this is supposed to be a sort of edge that sticks out. And there's sort of smooth differences in height. But actually a normal map is where you want to start getting a bit of crispness into it. So let's have a look at the crisp and go a bit closer. That might be a bit too much for this image, but it's working okay. Now can we get rid of this sort of slope that's coming down here and up here? So let's fiddle with the sliders, see what's going on. The pre-contrast seems to be helping. So that seems to be affecting the height. Let's just play with the different settings here. I still prefer the crisp. Let's just see what's happening with the different areas of frequency. And I'm finding it tricky to understand what they mean by frequency because there's frequency of color in terms of the color spectrum and that's obviously to do with waveforms. But what aspect of frequency are they actually talking about here? And it's probably some sort of mathematical thing that I don't understand. But let's just pull the colors around, see what's happening. We want to keep a bit of that crispness and lose some of this slopiness. So let's have a look compared to the crisp there. I actually prefer the crisp default. Let's have a look at the angular intensity and see if we can change anything there. And the angular amount, ooh. So we can obviously get a lot more detail there, but that will give us a fair bit of height, which we don't necessarily want in this case. With the shape recognition, rotation spread and bias, I'm not sure what they mean, but I'm assuming if we look at this, it will move and rotate around, so it might change the areas that are high and low. 
but I'm finding that quite tricky to understand so I'm kind of leaving that alone. Let's look at the final contrast and see how much difference that will make and you can see again that's adding a fair bit of bump. Now at the moment I seem to be unable to get rid of this slope here so I believe that's to do with the height map that it's taking the information from. Let's go back to our height map. Let's set this so it's a bit more crispy. Set the height map, go back to the normal map and create and there we go. We've got much more crispness because it's taking the information from the height map. So I've got more to play with if I give the height map more detail. So once I've created the normal map, I can go back to the height map. Bit of a confusing way to do it. And I know that you can actually take a normal map from a diffuse map, but I'm assuming they did this because they wanted to have the normal map work with and in conjunction with the height map. So let's smooth some of these out and see what these defaults do. Actually, the default's starting to look much better. Let's have a look at things like the angular intensity and the angular amount, bit of pre-contrast, see what that's doing. And I just want a tiny bit of inaccuracies on the surface. This is starting to look quite good for me. Always think about what you want your final image to look like. The bigger the difference in color, the more height information is coming across and the bumpier your image will look. So let's set that as normal map and show the full image. Okay, we've still got our height map, so we'll clear that now and it's not looking too bad as a normal map. I only want a subtle bump on this metal and that's looking quite good to me. What will make a big difference is this metalness map. So if I create that now, so the white bits will be completely metallic, black bits will be dielectric or non-metallic. So although in real life, generally it's either metal or not, so this should be black or white, there is an element of this where the metal is kind of being obscured by the coating. So maybe we want patches of metal to sort of come through slightly. So generally we want this fairly white, as in it's metal, but we want some sort of areas of off-white or greyness where this coating is affecting the metal. So again, let's look at what we can do with these things. The high pass should flatten things out a bit, which it's doing relatively well. I don't think we're ever going to get rid of these white spots here, even if we use the pick color and try and isolate it. A blur might help here, but you can see some sort of artifacts we're getting there. So let's try the blur overlay and just keep pulling around and see what's happening. I would say there's too many artifacts there. Let's try the final contrast, see what's happening. We want to go towards white and have it all metallic like this, but you can see the closer I go into the negative, some of the black starting to come through. So about there, final bias, we'll push it right up to either white or black. So that's like the final amount. So we want it fairly metallic like this. We can always come back to this and see if that works. So set as metallic. So let's move on to the smoothness map. Now this is a glossiness map if you're from Blender. So the opposite to roughness. And what we want to try and do is add some reflection to this. So the whiter it is, the more smoothness, the more glossiness, and therefore the more reflectivity. So we want it fairly white like this. So let's create. Not bad at the moment, but I think it needs to be a bit more blurry. So I'll just play with a few of the dials and see what we can do. And let's pull this down slightly. And remember, if I want it to be more white, more reflective, I can push the final bias upwards. Let's just see what that looks like. Set smoothness. And let's go to show full material. And as you can see, I've gone way over the top with the smoothness and probably the metallic as well. Okay, so let's go back to the metallic map, bring the final bias down a touch, and maybe the final contrast up just a little to bring some of these patches back to somewhere around here. Set metallic and show full material. And we're gonna need to bring the smoothness down a fair bit so let's go back to that, bring the final bias of the smoothness down, set smoothness, show full material. It's sometimes useful as well to say show next cube map and then you can see the different types of reflection that are on here. Okay, I'll quickly set up the ambient occlusion. That's the sort of shadowy bit, so there might be some dents in here. Let's quickly create that and the bias here will push it up or push it down. So we'll have a fair bit of ambient occlusion and dark spots. Let's push that in and then 
show full material. That's helped us out a fair bit and brought that sheen down. And then lastly, an edge map. So that will help us with the edge sort of crispiness. Let's create one of those. And the default looks quite nice here. This is when you can go quite sharp with your details. So you can change these different sliders. I would say that's a bit over sharp, not sharp enough. And then the tight looks quite good in this case. So I believe this is over sharp because it's just got too many highlights in it. But again, experiment with these things. So set as edge map and then show full material. And we're starting to find something quite interesting at the moment. I still feel like there's a bit too much reflectivity in here. But that's quite a tricky one to edit. If we go back to the smoothness map now, we can try and bring that white down, maybe with the color picker. The color picker doesn't end up with an eyedropper. You just actually have to click on the color here and it will appear over here. But as you'll see, it's very tricky to adjust that white. There's very little I can do that gets rid of it. So I'll undo that. I might just give it a bit more reflectivity and maybe a tiny bit more contrast. So there's a bit of difference across the, the model, maybe somewhere around there. So I set that material, show full material again, and it's looking quite interesting now. I can move the lights around with the middle mouse button L and see how that looks when the light moves past it. So middle mouse button and L. Your controls are down here. You've also got a few settings as well for outputting your materials. And just click on the buttons to get rid of them. So I hope this has given you some sort of insight into this program. Like I said, there's lots of confusing sliders in there, but always think about your end result and what you're trying to achieve with your black and white mask. That way you can experiment with the sliders and adapt your shapes accordingly. Lastly, when you've finished your project, I would suggest something like PNG to save to and then save project. It will ask you where you want to go. You can create a new folder down here, give it a file name and press select. That should have saved all my files now and there they all are. The last thing you might want to have a look at is the tiling. If I want to change any of the tile aspects, I do need to have a height map again. So I'll just create one so I can go into the tiling. At this point, I can move the offset and see what it will look like tiled. It's doing quite a nice job really. There is an edge fall off which will help smooth any transitions. You can probably see the transition line there, but it's quite a nice texture this because it's seamless. But let's put that smoothness up. I've put my offset back to zero because this is a seamless texture that will affect your texture and where it's laid out when it's tiled. So now if I go back to show full material, I've got this dreadful bump to it, but I've been able to smooth out those edges. So I can save all these and just not use my height map. Before you save these maps, you do need to say set maps to make sure that tile works and that will apply all the tiling you've just done. Okay, so that's a more in depth look at materialize. So I think the main thing for me with all the confusing dials that there are is to always be thinking about where you want your black and white map to end up and the influence it's going to have. Hopefully this will guide you and aid you in using the program. Thanks for watching.